The React team has released a real Halloween horror show. Or at least, that's what some people would have you think. React 19.2 has come out with a new hook called Use Effect Event, and a lot of people argue that it breaks the rules of hooks. Well, whether it does or not, it helps us make much safer use of Use Effect. So let me show you what it is, how to use it, and when and why to use it. Let's get right into it. All right, so let's start out with this very simple Tansac start application on the right-hand side and cursor on the left-hand side where we can edit that application. And we can go and enter in a username. And what we want is we want a login message that tells us how long it's been since this user has logged into the system. So we're gonna use a use effect to go and create a timer that does a count on that and then formats a login message that tells us how long it's been. All right, let's start off with a very simple use effect. All it's going to do is run on component mount because we have an empty dependency array. It's going to use set interval to create a timer that runs and gets called back every second. And that's going to give us back an interval that we're going to do a nice job on cleaning up if we get unmounted. So what are we doing here? Well, we want to go and set this login message to a count. So let's create the count first. So we initialize count to zero and then we increment it every second. And now we want to go and set that login message to something like user logged in n number of seconds ago. So here's the problem though. If I change the username, that actually doesn't update the username in that login message. So the problem here is that the function that we're passing to use effect actually creates a closure. And that closure captures the value of that username at foo when we first run the component. And because that value is captured, it doesn't update when user updates. So to fix this, we would need to go and add in user into the dependency array. Now let's try that. And I can refresh the page. It says I logged in a second ago, but now I make a change. It goes back to, well, one or really zero and restarts that count. So anytime I make a change, it clears the existing interval and creates a new interval with a new count and resets it all over again. So what are we gonna do? Well, what we used to do is use references for this. So I'm gonna create a use ref, and I'm gonna create a reference to the current value of user. So I'm gonna call this user ref, and I'm gonna give it the initial value of user, and I'm gonna set its current value to the current value of user anytime we do a component re-render. So now I'm gonna take this user ref current, and now I can get rid of user in the dependency array because I'm no longer having dependency on user directly. And now I make a change. Well, yeah, that actually works. So what's actually happening is our timer callback is connected through this user ref, which is actually constant. It's the same value all the time. So user ref itself remains constant and then its current value can change. And so we effectively have is like a handle from timer callback through this constant to this changeable value, which is kind of interesting. And this is how we would do this before we had something like use effect event. But now to move our way towards use effect event, let's go and turn our user ref, which has the value of user into a function ref. So now function ref is now a function that gives us the value. And so we need to call it. And now it works properly again. We get the current value of user because we're calling that function that then gives us back. So in this case, function ref, which is now being called by timer callback, gives us the latest version of the current function, which gives us back the username. So question for you, if I were to go over here and add in function ref to the dependency array, what do you think would happen? All right, let's try it. So I'm gonna go in and change the value and it's still gonna work, which is really cool. But what if I add in current? Because we're also calling that. So what do you think is gonna happen now? So it does what it did before, but actually this time it's even a little worse. What's happening now is that every time we are setting this login message, we're re-rendering the component, that's giving us a new function for current, and that's triggering this use effect. So on every single pass, we are firing that interval, and then we're clearing the interval, and then we're firing the interval again. So now let's see how easy it is to take this use ref and turn it into a use effect event. Now I can get rid of current because I no longer need that, and I can simply just call function ref, and there you have it, super easy.
And now when you think about it, this effect isn't actually factored all that well. It's kind of doing two things. It's maintaining a timer, but it's also setting some data. And setting some data inside an effect is where you get into some trouble. So let's move this set login message out of here and into our event callback. Now we need to make some changes. For example, we need to take time as an argument. So I'm going to take time as an argument. And then down here in our event callback, I'm going to call event callback, give it the count plus plus right there. This is actually starting to look really good. And then down in here, we can just grab the current user value. So now let's go back over into here, try it out. Now this is starting to look really good and really well factored because that use effect is actually just maintaining that timer and that callback is doing all the work of working on the data, in this case, the login message. So it's really clear who's doing what and you're not having a use effect do too much, which is how you get into issues with use effect. So now we understand what use effect event is and why it's useful. Let's talk a little bit more about how it actually works. And to do that, let's actually create our own version of use effect event. So I'm gonna call it use effect event my version of it. And it's gonna be a generic, so it's gonna take any function that takes any number of arguments and returns anything. And to make it work, I'm gonna use useRef again. So I'm gonna bring back useRef, and then I'm gonna track that function using a useRef just like we did before with function ref. And then I'm gonna return a function, and the function just calls the current function. So like the, a proxy, basically, you call it and it calls the current function. All right, let's give this a try. We'll use effect event my version. And we'll go over to Arc and see what happens. And it works just fine. So what's actually happening here? So what I've done is I've created another little function in here, this proxy function. Now the timer callback now calls that proxy function and that proxy function then uses that constant to call the current function that we've set. Now you might be like, wait a second, well this one's gonna change on every single render as well as this one, but that's okay because again, this constant remains constant. So even though the timer callback captures one version of this proxy function right out of the box, it's always just looking at this constant and that constant is then calling that current function. The use effect event that they give you out of 19.2 just hides the fact that we're creating this proxy function for you. But how do I know that use effect event is actually creating a new function every time? Well, let's try that. So again, let's go back to use effect event, the original, and let's see, if I were to go and add that into our use effect, as a dependency, what do you think is going to happen? All right, let's try again. Oh, it goes from zero to one to zero to one to zero to one over and over and over again. So what's happening is that every time we go through rendering app, which we do because we set the login message, and when you change state, a component in React re-renders, we create a new event callback that has a new function ref and that triggers that use effect because that use effect dependency array looks at every item in there and it says, well, the old callback isn't what you have now. And so it re-triggers that use effect over and over and over again. That's why you get the 0101. So one more thing about this, use effect event is kind of like a callback, right? It's kind of like use callback when you think about it. So why wouldn't you always use use effect event instead of use callback? Well. Well, let's take a look at a demo that I have. And of course, all of this code is available to you for free in a link in the description right down below. Sort table. So sort table is kind of similar. We've got this username up here. We've got this table. You can sort by first, sort by last. It's kind of cool. These two are completely disconnected. I'm only using this as a way to basically create renders in the component. Now let's go over into our console and we can see that sort table only re-renders any time that I actually change the sorting. And that's great. So let's go take a look at the code. So down in sort table, we got our text, we've got our sort field and our sort function. And in our JSX, we've got the input for the text and then our buttons to go and set the sorting. And then I memoized sortable table that takes the data, in this case as a constant of names, and then a sort function. And so we're gonna give that sortable table the function to help it sort. Now, that sortable table is memoized. What that means in React is that if the properties don't change, then there's no re-rendering, which is why we don't see a re-render. React is looking at the props that we sent to sort table, the data and the sort function, and saying, well, they're the same as they were last time, so we don't have to re-render. 
The reason that the sort function is the same is because we use a use callback and use callback is stabilizing the sort function reference. If we removed this use callback and simply had a function in there, then anytime I would change this text, we would also render a sortable table. And that's because the function sort function is changing its reference every single time through use callback was helping us stabilize that sort function. So can we do like, for example, use effect event in here? Will that help us somehow stabilize it again? Well, a couple of things. First off, no, it's not even going to run because use effect can't be called during rendering. But also too, if we were to use say my version of use effect event, which doesn't have that really handy error checking on it. We'll see what happens. All right, so it renders, but again, we have that same problem that we had before where the my version of use effect is returning a new function every single time. So even though it works, it breaks memoization. And so really there's a good case for both use callback and use effect event in React. They're two different things and you use them for two different very different purposes. All right, so I hope this helps demystify use effect event. If you have any questions or comments, put that in the comment section right down below. And in the meantime, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. And you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.